Okay. All right. Uh, I'd like to call this uh, public hearing to order. Uh, roll call, please, Kathy. Mr. Schuster. Here. Mr. McAndrew. Present. Dr. Rothschild. Here. Mr. Donahue. Here. Mr. Gone. Here. Thank you. Mrs. Reed. The purpose of said public hearing is to hear testimony and discuss the following. File of the council mm. number four, 2020, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of Scranton to take all necessary actions to implement the consolidated submission for community planning and development programs to be funded under the community development block grant program, home investment partnership program, and emergency solutions grants program for the five-year consolidated plan analysis of impediments to fair housing choice and annual action plan for the period beginning January 1, 2020. You're muted, Bill. Sorry, still getting used to this in the third week. Um, so we have all the council people here. We also have uh, with us um, Mary Pat Ward, who's, who is the executive director of the Office of Economic and Community Development. So hi, Mary Pat, how are you doing? Hi, how are you? Good evening. Good, good evening. And we also have the uh, deputy director of the Office of Economic and Community Development, Tom Priamo. Uh, so, uh, as Mrs. Reed said, the purpose of this public hearing is uh, to hear comment uh, from the public on our action plan. Uh, we did advertise in the newspaper uh, to uh, ask the public for any comment uh, to be sent to our office and to be included uh, in tonight's uh, meeting. And just for the record, there was no uh, public comment received. Uh, so, so what I'd like to do now is turn it over to uh, Mary Pat Ward, who is also uh, accompanied by uh, Sean Gallagher, who is a solicitor for OECD. Hi, Sean. And Good evening. I believe we have, you said Mary Pat, a uh, consultant for OECD. Who is that person? Yes, his uh, Dave Jordan. He is from Urban Design Ventures LLC, which is the consultant that we have been working uh, with diligently in regards to the documents and the requests before you this evening. Okay, great. And I think I see uh, Dave. Dave, is that you there on the? Yes, I'm labeled as UDV11. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, okay, I think we can get started. Uh, Mary Pat, I'll, I'll turn it over to you if you want to uh, make your presentation along with Mr. Preamble, and then uh, we'll uh, go through and see if there's any questions. Thank you. Sound, sounds great. Um, good evening. My name is Mary Pat Ward, and I am the Executive Director of the City of Scranton's Office of Economic and Community Development, better known as OECD. I am virtually present this evening uh, with my deputy director, Tom Priambo, solicitor, Sean Gallagher, and consultant, David Jordan of Urban Design Ventures, LLC, regarding the city's housing and urban development five-year consolidated plan, 2020 action plan, and the analysis to impediments to fair housing choice. Uh, many people ask, what is the purpose of OECD? Um, and simply put, it is to help people. And there are a variety of ways that the city of Scranton through OECD can help with federal funding we receive each year. So here we go. Um, every five years, OECD on behalf of the city of Scranton embarks on creating uh, an updated five-year consolidated plan that lays out overarching goals and objectives as it relates to HUD funding, uh, including housing, homelessness, community development, economic development, administrative planning, and management strategies, goals, and objectives. So that is a mouthful. I, I can understand that. Um, these goals and objectives are crafted 
market in a variety of ways. Uh, through our consultants at Urban Design Ventures LLC, uh, we created a survey that was available online, as well as the ability to fill out a paper survey and send it in. Our consultants also spoke with city administrators, some of our fellow council persons, city employees, as well as other government agencies, nonprofits, and other community stakeholders regarding the needs of our city. Uh, many, many know my story of homelessness here in Scranton 15 years ago as a young single mother of a toddler daughter seeking a better life. Uh, this community lifted me up in my time of need and I am forever grateful for that. Um, I was able to put down roots, graduate with a degree and create a life for myself and my daughter here in Scranton. And I am in the unique position of being a recipient of many of the public services that we support through the, you know, our federal funding many years ago. Um, working in direct services with a local nonprofit for over eight years and having a true understanding of the unique economic needs of our community and now leading a city department whose job it is to help people and lift them up like the community lifted me up. Um, I share this because it is important that city council, city administration, our residents and community stakeholders understand that it takes all of us uh, to make this community better and no decision is made single-handedly but through a team effort. Before City Council this evening is a draft of the 2020 action plan that includes a summarization of agencies, nonprofits, and others who are seeking funding to help make this community a stronger and better in a variety of ways, uh, especially in the world we live in right this very moment, these programs and projects will be vital in the city's recovery once we get on the other side of this. Um, OECD engaged a citizens advisory committee who generously donated their time to put forth the recommendations before you this evening. We are forever grateful to this team of residents that so very much care for this city. Uh, we encourage everyone to read over the documents discussed this evening and ask questions. Um, and I will have my deputy director, Tom Priambo, speak briefly to the survey and the citizens advisory committee. Uh, we encourage city council, residents and community stakeholders to ask questions and provide feedback in the next week regarding the five-year consolidated plan and our 2020 action plan. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to come before you this evening. Uh, Tom, over to you. Hey, thank you, Executive Director Ward. First, I would like to acknowledge <clears throat> the Citizens Advisory Committee members that were so instrumental in selecting the activities for the 2020 action plan and the goals for the five-year consolidated plan. The committee is made up of seven members. Um, their names are Nell O'Boyle, Alex Malafesis, Kristen Bundy, Brian Loftus, Reverend Rebecca Barnes, Aja Winton, Kathleen Mazin. These individuals each provided well over nine hours of their time as a volunteer over the last eight months to assist the city of Scranton in creating these documents. Our committee reviewed the data from the resident survey that was collected between August 8th of last year to January 2nd of this year with 85 or 500, excuse me, 585 respondents. Following the survey, following the review of the survey, the committee selected each activity and funded the amounts that are currently in the 2020 proposed action plan in front of you tonight. Careful consideration was given to remove absolutely any bias outcomes and to be sure that the selections married up with the survey data priorities that were provided by the participants in the resident survey. For all of their work and the time that they dedicated to this process and working with the OECD staff, we are very grateful for their time and their efforts that they put forward. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Dave Jordan. Dave is our consultant from Urban Design Ventures. Dave. Thank you, Tom. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jordan. Yes. I'm sorry, I don't know. Is anyone else hearing the feedback? 
Yes. Yeah, I think it yes. might have something to do with your microphone or when you're talking, it's a ton of feedback there. I'm not sure how we've had a bit of an issue with the last day or so with it being rather scratchy. Is it any better now? No, not really. It's still, re it's hard to hear you. Sorry, I don't know what to do about it. Um, because the speaker is built into my laptop and that's okay. I don't want to skip over you, but I can't really hear anything you're saying. So, Yo, he can call in on his phone. Yeah. Um, Do want to, I don't know. Mary Pat, does he have anything really important to offer? Because if, and I feel bad, I don't want to skip over you, but I can't. It's really hard to hear him. Um, what we could do really, we just wanted to introduce our, you know, to our council persons, our, our consultant here, Dave Jordan, uh, and, and let you know that we absolutely will be able to in the next week uh, before it's up for vote to be able to provide answers to any of the questions you may have and community stakeholders. So it was just letting you all know uh, that he's here and that we're here for you. Okay, thank you so much. And I'm sorry, Mr. Jordan, I don't wanna skip over you, but it, it is, I can hear that feedback. Um, okay, anything else from uh, Mr. Preambo or, or Mrs. Ward? No? Not at this okay. time, Councilman Cohen. Okay, so uh, now what I'd like to do, um, since we have some time left, is uh, just go around the room here and see if any council people have questions. So I'll start off uh, with, um, Dr. Rothschild, who is the uh, chair chairwoman for uh, economic and community development. So do you have any questions, uh, Dr. Rothschild? Um, I don't at this time, like I mentioned last week, I felt like it was a really well put together plan and I um, you know, appreciated all the goals that, that were in there. Um, I felt like everything was, was reasonable. Um, you know, I'm still reviewing all of it. Obviously it's a you know, large document, so as questions come up, I'm happy to direct them to Mary Pat or uh, Mrs. Ward. And I know that um, she had emailed me and I think I got back kind of late and we, we missed each other. So uh, perhaps we can connect another time this, this week. Absolutely. <laughs> Great, thank you. Great, thank you, Dr. Rothschild. Uh, Councilman uh, McAndrew, do you have any uh, comments or any questions? I don't have any questions at this time, um, but I'm excited to see the plan get moving. I need also need to read through the whole plan and, and, and then, you know, maybe have a couple couple questions after that. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Donahue, any questions or comments? Uh, just a comment real quick. I just want to thank uh, Mary Pat, Tom, and uh, the consultant for all the hard work that and Sean for all the hard work that's gone into this. I was the OECD chair uh at the beginning of this process back in august and mary pat involved and tom involved me every step of the way and i really appreciate that uh, i was a break from how things were done the first year i was on council so i really do appreciate that thank you great thank you and uh councilman schuster uh do you have any comments or any questions no no questions or comments at this time okay thank you uh, I have a few comments uh, and questions. The, the first uh, question would be, could you just explain, um, you know, in the past, timeline wise, we've all, uh, council has always voted on this. It seems like a lot earlier and then there had to be, a, it was a different process it seemed like. So can you just talk about maybe the difference now on how the funding is coming in from the federal government and what has changed? Sure. So. Uh... The, on the federal government end, there hasn't really been a big change. Um, we decided to make a little bit of a change. It's very hard for nonprofits to be, uh, or agencies in general doing public service work or, or anyone planning on doing a project to have to put information into an application and then not here for uh, what feels like a millennia um, while this process ensues. So it was really important having the ability um, to invest in a consultant this time around and, and using the, the rich history of OECD and, and, my, and my team, including obviously um, the indispensable Tom Priambo to 
to work out a new system that would work best for all of us. So for OECD, for city council, uh, and especially for our residents and our community stakeholders uh, in regards to being able to apply um, and, and then seeing that process move as opposed to just sitting there for a long time. And so we, we really hope as we continue to move forward and there's even a chance to, to, to move it even a little bit uh, forward that, that the process is, is, is less and, and more conducive to helping. So that's why it looks a little bit different this year, especially for the fact, you know, for instance, we may not see, um, we hear about what allocations we receive, but we don't actually see that money till the fall. And so it's a long time to be waiting on that. And so we're, we're, we're trying to move in the right direction. Okay, great. That makes sense. Thank you so much. Uh, one of the, pro there was a and few Councilman projects. Garland, just, Councilman Garland, just if I could, just for an example, when we approved the last uh, action plan, we did that in October of 18, I believe, the money that was awarded then didn't actually get into uh, the applicant's hands until October of 19. So they waited a whole year after we approved it. So this gives us a little more time to review, you know, the applicants that are applications that are coming in and move forward with that. So I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, one of the projects that uh, I had an interest in was the um, design and construction of new public sidewalks with ADA ramps, streetscape and lighting improvements um, it, within areas of the city of Scranton. Uh, and it looks like you're proposing $255,465. Do you have any idea yet where, uh, what areas of the city you're going to target in terms of that funding? So let's, um, we're gonna, we're gonna have Tom uh, <laughs> step in for this. This is uh, uh, our deputy director. This is really um, where, where he, he helps me in regards to some of, of this work, especially in regards to infrastructure. So sure. take it away, Tom, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Pat. And thank you, Councilman Gawne for that question. Um, obviously the eligibility um, for that criteria, that project to take place would be in a low to moderate income area. So it isn't specific to site uh, selection at this point in time. Um, that is an ongoing process within our office and within the administration. Um, hopefully we will have something soon um, when we get beyond this crisis that we're in right now. And we can move forward into something maybe even into the, as early as the fall or uh, next spring, um, but it, it isn't site specific yet with, with the one exception that it must be done in a low to moderate income area to meet the national objective. Okay, thank you. Uh, one of the other things that stuck out to me was the neighborhood police patrol. Um, in, the, in the years that I've been on council, that's always been funded. And uh, they put in, the city put in for uh, $275,202 and uh, the amount that uh, you are ended up being proposed was zero dollars. So, can you just explain the, uh, you know, what happened there? Sure, absolutely. So that um, the money that is requested each year is really based on a projection of the patrols that will be out on the street, if you will. Um, unfortunately. Um, in the last several years because the of the eligibility through HUD, um, it only pays for certain aspects, obviously our low to mod areas, uh, but also in regards to the money that we're able to spend down towards that project, in this instance, NPP. So for us, uh, as, as we are seeing a, a little bit of a buildup of that money, uh, it became imperative that we don't wanna set up uh, a very vital, vital and important project for failure uh, where you would look at something like recapture of funds. And so in this instance, as, as we hopefully have a more invigorated force with, with you know, um, uh, a new, you know, new entry level testing, et cetera, and, and getting more patrols out. We wanted to provide a gap year. They have more than enough money um, for this coming year and even beyond. Uh, and so we just wanted to provide them a time to play a little bit of catch up. And I'd rather see us be proactive than have to be reactive and have either that money recaptured 
or us have to enter remediation with HUD, uh, you know, to get see that money spent down. Okay, I, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, thank you for that answer. And uh, the one I usually have this question every year, and uh, and I know that you might not have the information on you. So uh, I, if if you could, uh, you know, provide that at, at some date if you don't have it readily available. But the uh, the project with the demolition of hazardous structures, the city wanted to uh, wanted four hundred thousand dollars, and what you had uh, proposed was two hundred twenty five thousand dollars. So. Uh, would you be able to provide counsel tonight or sometime in the near future how much funding is uh, the city currently has for the demolition of hazardous structures? Because I, I know over the last several years, we have always, uh, you know, approved a significant amount of money for that. So how much money do we currently have in there, number one? Number two, uh, how many houses have been demolished? Uh, with federal money in the last uh, two or three years. And um, I don't know if you would be able to talk about the strategy uh, or maybe we would ask the city officials that, but I'm curious as to the strategy. I know it would have to be done in low to moderate income areas, but what is the strategy on how you go about choosing those houses that, that will be demolished? Sure. Some answers I can provide now, uh, Councilman Gone, and then others I will will certainly come back to make sure that we have accurate numbers. So it's uh, we embarked almost over two years ago, uh, even in my time upstairs when I was in the law department, um, in trying to spend down the money in OECD to demolish, you know, those much needed structures that needed to come down for a variety of reasons. Um, and that it is a it's a very complicated process, uh, especially because in, and understandably the protection of a, of a homeowner or a property owner in regards to interference by the government. And so we have to make sure all of those legal processes um, are, are gone through and the availability or the ability to um, appeal any of that, that time has to go by before we can actually make it uh, active uh, on, on our list. Um, we worked really hard. We had 10 properties that we had, uh, were able to complete some um, asbestos abatement um, and, and we were just on the verge of, and actually was able to demolish one of the 10 properties on the list before the, the crisis hit. And, um, and we had to shut down what is un, un, under the label of construction at this point. And so through governor's orders, we had to stop. So we were gonna have 10 and it's almost happening, 10 properties come down uh, throughout the city of, of Scranton. Um, some of the, you know, some of those neighborhood eyesores that, you know, we're all aware of. Um, that process really starts up in the lips department with the housing appeals board and then, and then continues through that legal process. So we were hoping to expend near $400,000 at the end of, you know, with those 10 properties um, and the hope that you know, uh, as as we get used to this process and make it a better process, we can invest more money, but still be conservative in it and and be realistic in in what we can get done in a year. Um, and so, as far as what we've done over the two to three years, we'll I'll be able to provide some feedback and exactly the the you know down to the dollars and cents, if you will, we'll be able to provide that to City Council uh, for your digestion. Uh, what's exciting uh, about uh, moving forward and in, in involving our five-year con plan. And then I will um, put it over to Tom in case he has a, you know, a, a couple of extra thoughts uh, is that we have added commercial properties onto, onto our list. Generally, we've only done residential, but we feel that there is a need uh, for commercial properties to be added as long as they're meeting the eligibility requirements. And certainly there's strategic planning involved and, and the um, teamwork of city council and city administration as we would make any decisions about that. But we are excited about that prospect um, of, of being able to hopefully help, especially in our low to mod areas or in those much needed areas of being able to take down some commercial buildings if necessary. Okay, great. Thank you, Mary Pat. Tom, did you have anything to add to that? Sure, uh, Councilman Gaughan. Uh, actually, I just looked up the numbers that we had at the beginning of 2019 from our 2019 action plan we carried over into 2020. 
uh, actually $306,000. Uh, we've drawn a, a substantial amount, as Mary Pat had mentioned. We did some uh, asbestos abatement under contract uh, with a construction company. Now we drew down 65,000. So we have still under contract to spend 237,000. That's an active contract as of now, minus the uh, crisis that we're in and we had to suspend the activity. So um, we will be spending 306,000 um, when we get back up. Okay, thank you very much. That's very helpful. And then the last question that I have is, uh, can you just speak to, I, I see that there's $100,000 in the action plan uh, for the uh, development of job creation opportunities through the uh, business loan program, uh, site infrastructure improvements. Uh, you know, over my tenure on council, I've seen a, really a lot of uh, good projects come through uh, with the use of that program. So can you just uh, kind of give us a briefing on that, how that program has kind of evolved over the years and, and uh, where we are, what the uh, success looks like? I would absolutely not speak to that. Um, that would be our, you know, like a Tom Priambo that has been a labor of love for him for many years and, and certainly is our expert on this program. And so I would like Tom to speak to that if possible. Sure, absolutely, Director Ward. Thank you very much for that uh, question, Councilman Gaughan. Um, <clears throat> I know the amount uh, looks rather low. Um, but that would equate to three full-time equivalent jobs if we were able to get that money out the door um, at the, at the $100,000. Carrying over from last year, we have approximately $250,000. Um, and uh, as you know, uh, recently we submitted a, a legislative package for a client um, for 70,000. So that's another 70,000 that's going out the door that you recently passed that legislation for us. Um, going along with that, and this has been a very, very um, positive program for our department and for the city. Uh, over the last five years since its inception, um, we've spent approximately $750,000 and uh, the jobs have also saved um, multiple employment opportunities um, for individuals to, to work in Scranton. Uh, one that is um, very close to us is Delta Medic, who uh, you know they were going to um, possibly relocate outside of the city. And one of the things that helped them to decide to stay in the city was this program. And now they're in the city, they saved 150 jobs and gave us eight more. So um, as a result of that, you know, and they're still expanding. I was just speaking to them a couple of weeks ago. They're still looking at hiring more people. So that's a win-win. So the program is, is very active. The program is very successful. And I assure you that uh, with the money that we have being appropriated at $100,000 is enough for it to keep going, considering we're carrying over 250,000 right now as well. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I don't have any other questions. Does anyone else have anything that, uh, does any other council members have anything that they would like to add or any other questions? No? Okay, uh, Mary Pat, anything else from you? Uh, no, I thank you so much again for your time this evening, uh, you know, to, to listen to our story a little bit and, and help us along. I know it's a lot to take in. <laughs> and And please, if you have any, questions or feedback, this is a great opportunity to provide that to us, um, you know, before we, we put it all together and, and submit it to HUD. So this is our time, you know, to, to, make, this, to make this work. I really feel strongly um, about this package, especially in light of the fact of, and in the world into which we are right now, that these, that this will provide absolute vital impact uh, for the recovery of Scranton after, you know, we enter back into the, the world again. And so uh, thanks again for all that you all do. And, and we look forward to hearing from you next week. <laughs> yeah, you know, a quick question now that you just mentioned that, and, and I apologize if you had brought this up uh, earlier in your presentation, but uh, when will these applicants expect to receive this funding and maybe these projects get up off the ground and be shovel ready? 
Sure. So uh, for us, um, we actually, uh, for the first time in many years, received the um, the acknowledgement that we were getting a, you know, our allocations earlier than we generally do. Um, and so we were very excited about the prospect of that money coming in earlier. Generally, it comes in the fall. Um, I don't know into which the world we exist right now, what that means for these uh, this specific, these specific allocations. I know, you know, there's been a lot of extensions and, and different things happening on the level of federal government, everything from our taxes, you know, to the stimulus package coming out. But one thing, HUD is staying steady and true in regards to moving forward. Uh, there was no extensions in regards to submitting our five-year consolidated plan, that they plan on moving things along. I think they understand the benefit of getting this money, you know, into our community, uh, into all of our communities across the nation. So we're hoping to see this, you know, by the summertime would, would be great. Um, but that's that's best case scenario that we would see this by the summer. And we have to remember these funds are not for relief. Uh, these are funds that are strategically thought out and applied for each action, you know, each action year. Um, and so this is to continue the good work that has been taking place for many years amongst our public service, um, you know, agencies in this area amongst others. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, okay, if there are no further questions or comments, uh, Mary Pat, Tom, I wanna thank you and uh, your OECD staff. You guys do a fantastic job. Um, thank you for all that you do. And uh, we'll call this, uh, we will adjourn this uh, public hearing at this time. And uh, we do have 10 minutes until our regular meeting. So what we will do is go into our caucus now. Okay. So thank you. Thank Mary. you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Mary Pat. Thank Thanks, you. Sean. Thank you very Thanks, much. Dave. Have a good holiday, everyone. You too. Okay. Uh, so welcome now to our caucus, uh, which is transition into something a little bit different. Um, what I'd like to do uh, first, everybody, is just uh, turn it over to Lori for a second. Lori, do you have anything uh, that you want to address in, in, our, in the 10 minutes that we have? I know we speak to you individually, uh, and I speak to you almost every day, but do you have anything uh, meeting-wise or? Um, I, I don't have anything um, meeting wise. I just uh, would appreciate if you would. I, I, I know you intend on doing that. Just noting the public participation, you know, how to email. We've, we've been trying to really get that message out um, to email me with any comments or questions. Um, the information can be found on the city's website um, as well as in our legal notices that we place. Okay. And Thank that's you. all I have. Thank you. Okay, thank that. Thanks. That's a great point. Um, okay, Kevin, do you have anything on the legal side of things? Kevin, oh. you're muted. Yeah, you're muted, Kev. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, just to follow up with what Lori said and what. Um, Oh, has been raised uh, relating to our process for um, having these meetings. I just want everyone to know that as long as City Hall remains closed and we, re we remain under these emergency declarations, uh, we have to conduct the meetings this way. Uh, we are doing them in compliance with the Sunshine Act. We're doing it in compliance with our Home Rule Charter. And um, to be honest with you, I think we have been really at the forefront of, um, of devising a plan uh, to allow public meetings to go forward while these while this pandemic is 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 is, is taking place. So um, I understand that there are certain you know regulars uh, regular speakers at our meeting who are frustrated by this, but in reality this is this is the best we can do, and we are giving the public uh, every opportunity to address council, albeit in a written format. So I just wanted to put point that out. Um, secondly, um, just give me a second here. Uh, secondly, I, I've worked with, uh, uh, Lori and, and members of council and we've reviewed as well as the administration to review uh, the matters that are before council tonight, including the emergency ordinance. 
Um, I had a lengthy conference with uh, the city solicitor, Jessica Escra, and I'm, I feel comfortable that the ordinance that they proposed, uh, which ratifies the mayor's prior uh, proclamation is narrow enough uh, that, we, that the council is not forfeiting any of its uh, legislative uh, authority and also is um, at the same time pr provides the administration and the mayor with the flexibility that she needs to address the emergency situation. Um, so I feel comfortable that we that the ordinance as drafted will will address the, the the city's needs without giving a blank check, without having any over, meaningful oversight by city council. Um, I know at last week's. Um, but with that said, uh, Councilman Donahue, I thought made a, raise a good, an important issue that we are going to have to address, and that is um, the mayor did. Um, release a proclamation extending the tax deadlines, which I think everyone on council agrees with. However, I think there has to be a ratification by council uh, so that there's no question as to the, to the effectiveness of that order. So with that said, if, if you would wish, I, I'll proceed with uh, developing that legislation so that we can pass that uh, within the next, in the coming months. Um, lastly, um, I know issues were raised at our, our last week's caucus um, on the issue of this acting human resources director who, we, who, who the mayor reported to us is an employee of Uffberg and Associates, the city's labor council. Um, I reached out to Bob Uffberg, our labor, the, the city's labor solicitor who has agreed to make himself available to, for um, members of uh, council and myself, uh, we can't have more than three obviously participate in the call, but to answer any questions we have re regarding that arrangement. I'll, I'll, to your questions that you've raised, I don't believe that her appointment to that position is within the scope of the request, the RFP or the proposal or the contract. So we have to get an explanation as to how that individual is serving in that capacity. Uh, but he has made him, he has offered to make himself available. Obviously, this week with the holiday, it may be, uh, it may not happen this week, but maybe uh, prior to next week's um, council meeting. And um, I believe that's it for me at this point. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Uh, the only thing I wanted to do really, really quick in, in the last uh, six minutes that we have here is first of all, welcome Mr. Schuster. Uh, Tom, thanks for uh, being with us at your first uh, council meeting. Uh, Thank you. Very unusual circumstances here and in the fact that we're not meeting in person, but uh, regardless, uh, we, we thank you for uh, taking on the job. Um, I just wanna run through the agenda really quick. So uh, we do have 5B, the emergency uh, certificate for the mayor. So we will pass that uh, tonight since it is an emergency declaration. Uh, we have the appointment of Al Lucas, the fire chief. Um, we have the CDBG piece, the action plan from OECD in sixth order. And then uh, 7A is the contract with Thomas uh, McLean and Associates for the uh, project consultant, the recreation needs assessment. Um, and then 7B is just uh, adopting a resolution, accepting a donation uh, from a, a, a woman to the city of Scranton Fire Department. So uh, the agenda in terms of legislation is pretty straightforward. Uh, the only thing I will say is that I did have a chance to talk to Tom McLean, uh, who is the um, uh, person in charge, the, the head person in charge at the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, firm that's going to be doing the uh, recreation needs assessment. The only thing I'll say on that is um, we, we agreed uh, that when we get back in City Hall, it would be great for him to come in and give a presentation in, in uh, person on our park system. Uh, Tom has been doing this type of work for 30 some years now. And I, uh, I think this legislation that we're voting on tonight is really progressive in the fact that it will finally give the city a roadmap uh, for our park system. So what Tom is gonna do is basically look at each park, uh, what are the needs, what are the priorities, and then we'll have this master plan for the next, you know, how, however many years. And the one thing that he had mentioned to me that I think was thought was a great point was that with, when this master plan is complete for our park system, 
the grant opportunities for us uh, go up significantly because DCNR and other agencies who give these grants out, they look very highly on the fact that a municipality has a master plan for its park system. So we'll be able to navigate that whole process a lot uh, more easily uh, with a master plan. So um, I, I just wanted to comment on that really quick to, to give you guys an update on uh, my conversation with him. Um, other than that, um, we did have uh, two members of the public uh, send us comments in. I know all of you have received those and reviewed them. So in fourth order, I'll, I'll ask that someone uh, make a motion to that effect so that we can enter them into the record. Um, the, if you go on the city's website, and I'll mention this in the announcements, and you go to city council's page, you can actually uh, view our minutes and you can see that every word of uh, what has been submitted by the public is part of our uh, part of our minutes. So I just wanted to make sure that uh, everyone was aware of that. Um, we have three minutes left. Does anybody have anything that you wanna go over agenda wise uh, before we go into the regular meeting? No, everybody's good. Um, not, not for the agenda, but I just wanted to make a note real quick. Um, mm -hmm. If anyone's trying to get in touch with me, my uh, phone is currently broken. So I'm waiting on getting that repaired. Uh, email is the best way to get in touch with me. So I apologize if anyone's tried to call or text me, but just wanted to let you let you know that um, too, Bill. Okay, thank you so much. Anybody else? No, just to welcome. Welcome Tom Schuster on uh, to, the, to the team. And uh, he was sworn in today at uh, slightly before 12 noon uh, by Judge Corbett. So it's and official. He's gonna, and he's gonna play the guitar for yeah. us uh, after our meeting, right Tom? <laughs> All right, uh, oh, by the way, we have Tracy Hart with us today too. So just in case anybody's wondering who Tracy Hart is. Tracy, do you just wanna introduce yourself really quick? Hi. Hi, Tracy. And Hi, you... thanks for letting me come on. Um, I'm, I work in the commissioner's office, so we're gonna be Zooming our next couple meetings. I'm just trying to figure everything out on our end. Okay, thanks, Tracy. Yeah, Tracy and I had talked earlier this week and uh, I gave her the link to the meeting so that she could come in and basically see how we're operating here. So um, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, Tracy, just at the end of the meeting, let me know and uh, we'll help you in any way that we can. All right, thank All right. you. You're welcome. See ya. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to um, uh, give us a minute here and then we'll start our, our regular meeting, okay? Okay. Uh, uh, please call this, I'll, I'll call this uh, public meeting to order. Uh, I'd like everyone now to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing now for a moment of silent reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and also for those who have passed away in our community, especially Jane DeBilio, beloved mother of former Scranton City Councilman Gary DeBilio. And also I'd ask that we remember Cody Barace. It's the seventh anniversary, anniversary of his tragic passing. And uh, it's been truly inspiring what Cody's friends and family have done in his honor by forming an organization promoting or organ donor awareness. I'd also like to ask now that we take a special moment uh, of silence uh, for people in our community and throughout the world who are currently suffering or who have passed away from the coronavirus. I'd like us to think now about them and their families, that they may find peace. I'd like us to think now about the doctors, the nurses, the researchers, and all medical professionals and first responders who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they find protection and peace. Whether we are home or abroad, surrounded by many people suffering from this illness or only a few, let us stick together, endure together, mourn together, persist and prepare together, and in place of our anxiety, let us continue to hope and find peace.
Thank you. Ms. Carrera, roll call, please. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know if you heard me. Ms. Carrera, roll call, please. Okay. Mr. Schuster? Present. Mr. McAndrew? Present. Dr. Rothschild? Here. Mr. Donahue? Here. Mr. Gaughan? Here. Thank you, Ms. Carrera. Uh, just to note, there will be a motion to move item 5B to 6th and 7th orders for a final vote based on the attached emergency certificate tonight. Mrs. Reed, could you please dispense with the reading of the minutes? Third order, 3A correspondence received from Kohansky Company PC dated March 23, 2020 regarding 2019 financial statements audit. 3B correspondence received from Kohansky Company PC dated March 23, 2020 regarding current services to be provided for the City of Scranton audit for 2019. 3C, single tax office, city funds distributed, comparison report 2019-2020, year to date, March 31, 2020. 3D, correspondence received from the Pennsylvania Economy League, dated March 31, 2020, regarding Act 47, coordinator's recommendation to the Secretary of the Department of Community and Economic Development for the City of Scranton. 3E, proclamation received from Mayor Paige G. Cognetti, dated March 27, 2020, declaring the state of emergency in the city of Scranton, extending the date of certain taxes due to July 15, 2020. 3F, correspondence received from Mayor Paige G. Cognetti, dated March 31, 2020, in response to council's correspondence since March 19, 2020. Thank you, Mrs. Reed. Uh, are there any comments on any of the third order items? Um, I, I just make a comment on the uh, item 3E with the, uh, the date of the taxes. Um, the school board last night, we uh, added a friendly amendment to keep the um, current date or current deadline, but not um, follow up with any delinquencies until July 15th, just to keep our cash flow situation uh, in order. Thank you, Mr. Schuster. Does anyone else have any comments on the third order items? Uh, I have general comments uh, about the, the, the recommendation from the Pennsylvania Economy League, but I'm gonna hold those until uh, our comments and motions in fifth order at this time. Um, there's no other comments uh, received and filed. Do any council members at this time, time have any announcements? Uh, just not necessarily an announcement, but a reminder, uh, if you haven't already to fill out your census form, uh, you should have gotten something in the mail. If not, uh, you could go to my2020census.gov uh, to fill out it, fill the census form out. Um, we had Before we had a public hearing on how we distribute our OECD funds. And the census actually determines where those funds can be spent. And that's just one example of uh, money that's determined based off the census. So please make sure you fill out your census forms at my2020census.gov. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have any com or any announcements? Uh, I do actually. Um, EJ to DJ and his wife Penny along with his beautiful uh, daughters, McKay and Olivia have been doing a Facebook Live dance party from their home in Westside during the Stay at Home uh, initiative. This event is usually broadcast at Monday, Wednesday, and Thursdays at 5 p.m., Friday at 8, Saturday, and Sunday at 12.30. I just want to give a hats off to EJ and his beautiful family for bringing us all together through music and dance during these trying times. That's all I have. Thanks. Thank you. I would second that. I've, I've watched it. Mr. McAndrew is very well done. Anyone else have any? Uh, I actually participated too. <laughs> did you? Anyone have any other announcements? Uh, I have a few. 
Uh, first, if there are any groups or organizations that are offering free services or assistance to someone that's in need during this national emergency, and you'd like to have that information available on ECTV, please email chrisectv at gmail.com. The wording of your email is exactly what ECTV will publish uh, on channel 19. I'd also like to state once again that if anyone would like to comment on agenda, agenda items or city business, please send those comments in writing to our city clerk, Lori Reed, by emailing lreed at scrantonpa.gov. City Council will accept public comment until the day of our meeting, Tuesday at 4.30 p.m. Public comment is reviewed by the council prior to our meeting and is placed on the official record and in the minutes of our meetings. Council's agenda is now being posted for public review the Friday before our Tuesday meeting to give people enough time uh, to review all the legislation and backup documentation if they were to, uh, to comment on it. Uh, our agenda and minutes can be accessed by going to www.scrantonpa.gov and clicking on the city council page. And as Solicitor Hayes mentioned in the caucus, obviously this is not uh, the way that any of us would like uh, the situation that any of us would like to be in. Uh, we are doing the best that we can at this point in terms of uh, trying to meet. Uh, I had a conversation with our city clerk, Lori Reed, uh, earlier in the week, and she gets updates from city clerks around the state. And we are one of the few uh, councils actually that is still meeting on a regular basis. There are several councils that have just canceled their meetings altogether. So we are doing the best we can. And, and I think we all look forward to the day when we can be back in uh, city council chambers with everyone and, and conducting our, our business as we regularly, regularly used to do. Uh, also, the, uh, the mayor informed me today that there will be a virtual food bank uh, fundraiser benefiting the Northeast Regional Food Bank. This will be Thursday, April 9th from 7 to 8 p.m. Uh, participants will join through uh, Zoom and viewers can watch through Facebook or YouTube and apparently there'll be more information coming uh, about that. So just uh, keep checking Facebook or YouTube and uh, there will be some sort of announcement coming from uh, the mayor's office. Uh, last week, I also wanna uh, announce that I failed uh, just by accident to mention that the council received comments from Faye Franis and Joseph Healy. Uh, they were a part of the record for last week's council meeting and they are in our official minutes if anyone would like to review those comments. Okay. And uh, that is all I have at this time. Mrs. Reed? Uh, fourth order, citizens participation. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Reed. All right, let me get the fourth order. Okay, I, I'd ask now if someone, uh, one of my fellow colleagues uh, could make a motion that a council officially accepts and places the comments received from the following individuals into our record to be fully included in our minutes. and. The two people that, uh, two citizens that we received comments from for this week's meeting were Marie Schumacher and Faye Franis. So would someone please make that motion at this time? I'd like to make a motion that we accept public comment to be included into our minutes. There's I'll been second. a second. Thank you, there's been a motion and a second uh, on the question. Uh, on the question, uh, I reviewed both Mrs. Schumacher and Mrs. Franis's comments as I know everyone else did. Uh, from last week, we received some questions uh, to council. They are under review and we will do our best to try to answer those questions and get back to those citizens with answers. Uh, Mrs. Schumacher posed several questions, um, stormwater management along with some other things. Uh, it may be difficult uh, to be quite honest uh, to get answers to those questions now in the middle of the coronavirus crisis, uh, if for no other reason that uh, those type of things I think are somewhat on the back burner and it may be difficult uh, to get specific answers to those questions, but nevertheless, we will do our best uh, in a, in a uh, reasonable time frame to get those questions answered uh, that were posed to council. Uh, so we have a motion, a second, anyone else on the question? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Um, okay, uh, Mrs. Reed. Fifth order, 5A motions. Thank you, Mrs. Reed. Uh, Councilman Schuster, do you have any motions or comments at this time? 
Um, I would just like to thank my new colleagues on council for their vote of confidence um, with this appointment. And I'm glad they feel that my record on the Scranton School Board um, could help to strengthen city government. So thank you all. Thank you, Councilman Schuster. Right, and, uh, sorry, Mr. Gahan, one more. Oh, that's okay. Um, I did receive a call about the, um, the West Side High Park Neighborhood Watch um, Community Center on Washburn Street. So I guess um, uh, hearing some things in the past about it, I, I don't really have any new updates, but um, a citizen was questioning what the update on that building was. So maybe I could ask Ms. Reed if we could um, reach out to see if any city money was used in that, in that um, for that community center and where they are with that. Yeah, certainly. I don't know if that was put in the most concise way, but. <clears throat> no, no, I, I, I know where that building is. And I know that uh, uh, in my time on council, I know that there has been a lot of money put in there. I don't know that city funds were used, uh, but I am certain uh, Mrs. Reed can try to find that out over the next few days. Thank you. Anything else, Ms. Mr. Schuster? That's all. Okay, thank you. Councilman McAndrew, do you have any motions or comments at this time? Yes, I do. Uh, I just want to, um, Check in with uh, Mrs. Reed. I, I know last week I posed a question regarding being self-insured, self-insured, I'm sorry, and that normally when benefits are cut, they're paid one month ahead. So I know Ms. Reed, Mrs. Reed sent an email today uh, posing that question, uh, hoping that we would have got a response today. And, and I didn't see one. Mrs. Reed, did we get a response yet? Uh, no, Councilman um, McAndrew, unfortunately, we did not receive a response in time for the meeting tonight. Thank you. Could you just please follow up uh, for me? Yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Also, um, as chairman of Public Safety Committee, I would like to thank Mayor Cognetti for her successful effort in stopping daily Greyhound uh, buses uh, from New York to Scranton. Uh, and also, I'd just like to say, uh, being the week of Passover and Easter, and actually being a chef by trade, um, I, I know that holidays and food bring people together. Uh, and families together. This holiday will be a tough one, but to continue to celebrate holidays and, and social events with families and friends, uh, we need not to be tempted and should stay, uh, continue to stay home and stay safe. Uh, I just want everybody to have a blessed Easter and Passover to all of those that observe these holidays and to everyone else enjoying uh, this, this really nice spring weather. That is all I have. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilman McAndrew. Dr. Rothschild, do you have any motions or comments at this time? Uh, no, I don't have any motions or comments at this time. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Rothschild. And uh, Councilman Dunahue, do you have any motions or comments at this time? Uh, yes, just briefly, I want to uh, wish everybody a happy Passover and a happy Easter uh, this upcoming week. Um, and again, urge everybody to stay at home to only make uh, necessary trips out of the house if it's absolutely necessary pharmacy grocery uh, doctor's appointment those sort of things um, the longer you know we all abide by or the sooner we all abide by these uh, restrictions these social distancing restrictions the least amount of time we're going to have to do them so if everybody follows them we'll get out of this quicker um, also just want to bring up that uh, we still haven't gotten uh, any numbers on with regards to the furloughs. Um, all we're looking for is really how many people were laid off and what did it save so that, and also what, what sort of um, revenue projections are being used. I know that the revenue projections keep on changing, but at the same time, there should be a best case and a worst case scenario um, so that we know when we're looking through these budgets and exploring different things we might have to cut, how far we really have to go. Um, but the, you know, the answer we keep on getting is a personnel issue, but it's also a budget issue. And that's a part of council's uh, prerogative is uh, approving a budget and then making sure it's followed. Um, also, as uh, Solicitor Hayes brought up in um, caucus, I did mention to him uh, this morning when I was talking to him about uh, just doing some sort of resolution extending the deadline from uh, April 15th to July 15th for business privilege or mercantile, just to make sure we're covering our bases because we did approve an ordinance that had April 15th as the deadline date. So I just think just to make sure we're covering all our bases there. Um, and the other thing that we haven't in past in the 
first two years I was on council, we had received um, refuse legislation. I know that uh, in conversations Solicitor Hayes had with uh, Solicitor Escra, um, the reasoning was that we haven't gotten it yet this year was that um, there was language in the legislation that was passed last year that says and for each year thereafter. Um, Mrs. Reed, would you be able to send correspondence to the law office and copy the mayor just asking for that reasoning in writing so we don't have it secondhand so there's an actual record of it? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. And that's all I have this evening. Thank you, Councilman Gunn. Thank you, Councilman Donahue. Uh, I just have a few comments. The, the first thing, <clears throat> and this will be in third order next week, we received a, uh, a letter from uh, PennDOT <clears throat> about our, our, our bridge replacement projects throughout the city. As I've mentioned at past meetings, one of the issues that we have in the city is uh, deteriorating bridges uh, throughout, the, throughout uh, Scranton. Excuse me for a minute. Sorry, I had to take a drink. <clears throat> One of the uh, issues, as I said, is the uh, deteriorating uh, bridges throughout the city. So we actually received a letter from PennDOT, which will be in third order, as I mentioned uh, next week. And they are going to be replacing within the next few years, the North Main Avenue bridge uh, over uh, the uh, uh, Leggett's Creek, the Lackawanna Avenue bridge over Railroad Avenue, the Parker Street bridge over La the Lackawanna River, and the Elm Street Bridge over the Lackawanna River. Um, the letter notified uh, council and the city that they are gonna start this whole process by evaluating each bridge to determine the appropriate work that's required during construction. So you will, citizens will start to see representatives on site during the spring and summer to complete surveys, uh, in-depth bridge inspections and traffic counts. Um, Again, as uh, our city engineer, John Poshis had relayed to me several times, these bridge projects take years. So it's not likely that we'll see any sort of uh, actual construction uh, until maybe four or five years down the road. Um, but nevertheless, the, uh, the process is starting. Also on our, our third order uh, agenda next week will be a letter that council received uh, from Pennsylvania American Water to update us on some projects and some critical work. Uh, even through the coronavirus crisis, they are still going to provide essential services and continue to advance work on utility construction projects uh, that they deem critical. Scheduled to begin actually this week, weather permitting, uh, contractors are going to replace existing four, six, and eight inch cast iron pipes uh, with new eight inch ductile iron mains along several city streets. Uh, this range is really all across the city. Um, so this will be placed uh, on our agenda next week. And uh, if anyone's interested, they can take a look to see if they're in one of these affected areas. And Pennsylvania American Water will be uh, notifying these residents as well uh, that they are going to be doing work. Um, I did receive a uh, phone call from a woman in the Oakmont area up uh, on East Mountain about quads. Um, uh, with the nice weather, uh, as we know, comes uh, the use of uh, quads, which have disrupted life in that area and really uh, in other areas of the city as well. I was able to reach out to Chief Graziano. Um, obviously, we know from past experience that those uh, people who ride on quads cannot be chased uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, we wouldn't want anyone to get harmed. Uh, but Chief Graziano did notify me that they were going to do their best uh, to intercept these uh, people um, and, and try to get them to stop doing this. Uh, they, the, the, especially in the Oakmont area, um, and I'm sure through other places in the city, there are people now working from home, uh, trying to get work done. And this apparently in Oakmont at least has been nonstop. Uh, so um, hopefully that issue is uh, going to be taken care of. The other thing I just wanted to uh, briefly mention was in, in third order, uh, we received uh, last week a letter uh, from the Pennsylvania uh, Economy League. Uh, the letter was actually addressed to uh, the, the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development. And it was uh, 
our Act 47 coordinator's recommendation to the secretary of DCED uh, for the city of Scranton and whether or not uh, we were prepared to exit from Act 47. So I just wanted to make uh, a few uh, comments on this uh, because this letter is important, especially now uh, in light of uh, the economic effects that the coronavirus will most undoubtedly have on, on the city. Um, before I get into the points I wanna make on this, I do wanna say that I think uh, it is important that council work together with the Pennsylvania Economy League and the state and the mayor and her administration so that we can resolve some of these issues. Um, and in reading the letter, there are several issues. Some of them are not surprising. Uh, the first uh, issue that uh, was noted in this letter is that in 2019, uh, the, or in 2018, the city had a deficit of uh, nearly one, a little bit over uh, $1 million. Uh, in 2019, the uh, unaudited financial statements were examined and the city experienced an excess of revenues over expenditures, resulting in almost a million uh, and a half dollar surplus. Um, they're projecting in 2020 uh, that the city would incur a slight deficit of $124,290. The one thing that uh, I am uh, concerned about is in the 2020 budget uh, under the sale of assets, uh, the previous administration had put in for one and a half million dollars. Actually, it was more than that. Council pared it back a little bit because of concerns we had at that time. But one and a half million dollars for the sale of delinquent refuse and uh, delinquent real estate bills. So uh, I think the mayor had mentioned this in, in her letter to us on the furloughs, but that is a point of concern because we don't know what that looks like. And we were banking on that, or the previous administration was banking on that in terms of closing uh, a, a budget deficit. So, you know, I, I've spoken to the mayor about it. We're going to continue to monitor that. But right now, that obviously is a concern because we don't want to come up uh, with a, a hole in the budget. Uh, so we'll continue to watch out for that. Um, the second thing that uh, I wanted to mention on page 12 was that, unfortunately, the uh, the Pennsylvania Economy League is projecting that the city will incur operating deficits throughout the 2021 to 2025 projection uh, period. So um, we're looking at, uh, let me see here. We're looking at uh, 2021, uh, five, $503,000 uh, potential deficit. And then it just keeps going up over a million and a half in 2022, nearly $4 million in 2023. In 2024, nearly uh, three and a half million dollars. And then in 2025, it's projected at almost $5 million uh, deficit. Now what they're citing and something that is no surprise to anyone who has uh, dealt with city finances over the last few years is the lack of inherent growth in our real property tax revenue. Uh, that's the main driver for the projected operating deficits. And this lack of inherent growth is the result of annual flat or decreasing city real property assessed values. Um, I won't go through the whole thing, but uh, they provide some pretty stark numbers here, which they, they did really in, in December of last year when they came before council, when we were preparing uh, to pass the budget. Um, it goes without saying that if we continue to operate without a reassessment, we're gonna continue to suffer. Uh, we need, and, and this again provides anyone who's paying attention with the fact that the lack of a reassessment is hurting uh, the city of Scranton. Um, and that is evident in, in this uh, document here. And, and again, it's been uh, pulled to the county and, and it's been relayed to the city over the last uh, number of years. The uh, third point that I wanna make here on page 18 is the fact that what Pell is uh, recommending uh, uh, over the next few years is uh, minor uh, tax increases. So they're recommending that the city increase its property tax millage rates by 1.4% uh, in 2021, 3.5% uh, and 6.2% in, uh, in the years 2022 and 2023. Um, 
they also mentioned that the city's participation in the Act 47 program cannot directly reverse this trend that we that we find ourselves in. So long story short, at the time of writing the uh, their recommendation, um, they under normal circumstances would recommend that the city exit Act 47. But under the circumstances with the coronavirus, uh, they're going, it says the future impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the city's financial projections as presented by the coordinator. And this Act 47 coordinator's recommendation is unknown at this time. The coordinator will continue to monitor the city's fiscal condition as the city progresses through the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So I would just ask everyone to you know, take a look at, at this uh, if you haven't already when you can. Um, one of the things that Pell has recommended over the last several years is small annual tax increases um, so that we don't get hit with uh, very large uh, double digit tax increases. Um, my concern with this is that the recommendation from Pell and the recommendation from the state when we're faced with these issues uh, that we're very well aware of is to continue to go back to the property owner and to raise their taxes. Um, it's a never ending battle in the six years that I've been on council, the answer is always to go back and to raise property taxes. Um, I personally don't understand how we can expect to grow as a city is we always go back to the, the, um, the property owner. The bottom line in all of this, there's no simple solution, but the local government system that we operate in is broken, and it has been for a very, very, very long time. I'll read, I want to read a section because I think this is so important from Pell's own report that they issued a few years ago, and they state, the Commonwealth attempted to legislate away the inadequacy of Act 47 by compelling municipalities to leave the program through establishment of an arbitrary deadline. And what they mean by that is that in 2012, when the legislature amended the Act 47 uh, legislation, they, the clock started ticking for municipalities who were distressed like Scranton. So we only had five years to, to get out or go into uh, receivership or disincorporate uh, as a municipality. So the legislation was passed despite the fact that it is questionable to assume real change could be made in only five years when the problems inherent in the local government system itself have not been addressed. This was written a few years ago. They still have not been addressed. Pell states that the truth is that the Commonwealth can change the optics of distress by claiming to have fixed Act 47 municipalities by forcing them out of the program, but that action, that action has done nothing to repair the broken system these municipalities must operate in. Given the findings of the most recent stress index, the consequences of failing to truly reform the rules under which local governments function likely re will result in an increased municipal distress throughout the state. So my only comment on this, and I've made this comment, and Kyle's probably sick of me saying it, and others are sick of me saying it over the last few years, but we can only do so much. The state continues to ignore, just in my opinion, distressed municipalities. And they have ignored distressed municipalities for a number of different years. And they always give us the worn out answer of raise property taxes to fix the problems. And many times that's the last result. As all of us know who have reviewed the budget, uh, there is only so much that can be cut. Most of our expenses are labor, health insurance, things that are we are contractually obligated to pay. Um, but the problems that we face in Scranton and all the other municipalities who are distressed face stems from the local government system that's dysfunctional, it's outdated, and it's broken. So unless the system is reformed and fixed, each council person that's in the Zoom room tonight and those who will come after us will continue to face this never-ending battle that the city faces every single year. So I wanted to make sure that uh, once again, I, I stated for the record, uh, these, these issues that have been well documented over uh, the last few years and since we've been in distress since I believe 1992. So what I would ask, and maybe we can formulate some kind of correspondence and, and work together with the mayor and her administration, is ask that in light of uh, the crisis that we find ourselves in with the coronavirus and the crisis that we will probably will find ourselves in financially as a result of it, that instead of 
the quick fix of going back to the property owner uh, to raise property taxes, that the state and the state legislature actually do their job and identify the problems and provide solutions for them, rather than these half-baked solutions with Act 47 that municipalities stay in for decades. And uh, as I said in December, and, and, I, and Councilman Dun Dunahue was there when I asked the Pennsylvania Economy League uh, director, Mr. Cross, what, what was the point of all of this? What was the point of being in to stress status and being in Act 47 for almost most of my lifetime since I'm, since I'm a young kid? Um, I, the mayor has issued a, a statement, as, as we all know, that, that she wants to stay in Act 47, and there may be merits to that, but I think if we're going to do that, we need to have a conversation as a city with our state legislature to make sure that they know that the system is broken and that there has to be uh, solutions put forward by them in working with uh, the distressed municipalities uh, in Scranton and uh, throughout the state. And that's all I have, Mrs. Reed. Uh, uh, Councilman Gaughan. Uh, sure. Just to add on to your point, um, just let's remember that the the taxing code, that, the state taxing code that we're operating on, was developed in the late '60s. So that's when Pennsylvania, when a lot of the population was concentrated in cities. We didn't have suburbs. There were cities. There were farms. That's the taxing code that we're operating under now, which is completely outdated. Just to add on to your point. Thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, and that's all I have for tonight. Mrs. Reed. Thank you. 5B for introduction and ordinance ratifying the declaration of emergency issued by the mayor in conjunction with the office of the governor of Pennsylvania's proclamation of disaster emergency for the entire Commonwealth and authorizing the mayor to exercise and enforce the emergency powers necessary to preserve the health, welfare, and safety of the citizenry of the city of Scranton as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Emergency certificate attached. Thank you. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Is there a second? Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Uh, Mrs. Reed, you may have to mute yourself. There's like, I think there's feedback coming from your phone. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Donahue? I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules to move item 6B to 6th and 7th orders based on the attached emergency certificate. There's been a motion. Is there a second? Second. On the question? Uh, just on the question, I'd just like to point out that this, this emergency certificate only applies to the city's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. The ayes have it and so moved. Mrs. Reed? 5C for introduction, a resolution appointment of Alan Lucas, 2722 Bernie Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, to the position of fire chief, as well as emergency management coordinator, effective March 23, 2020. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Is there a second? Second. On the question. On the question, um, again, I, I think, you know, Chief Lucas is doing a great job um, in the response to this. I know we've brought up some concerns regarding uh, the increase in the salary away from what was approved in the 2020 budget. And we're still reviewing that before final passage of this resolution next week. Anyone else on the question? I would echo the same, um, like I stated last week. I mean, Al's, 
he's doing a fantastic job. He'll continue to do a fantastic job. My only issue is, is the one, um, you know, that's not budgeted. So um, that's all I have. Okay. Anyone else? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Mrs. Reed? Sixth order, 6A reading by title, file of the council number four, 2020. An ordinance authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of Scranton to take all necessary actions to implement the consolidated submission for community planning and development programs to be funded under the community development block grant program, home investment partnership program, and emergency solutions grants program for the five-year consolidated plan analysis of impediments to fair housing choice and annual action plan for the period beginning January 1, 2020. Thank you, Mrs. Reed. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? Um, Mr. Chairman, I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Okay. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it and so moved. Mrs. Reed? 6B, formerly 5B, reading by title, file of the council number 5, 2020, an ordinance ratifying the declaration of emergency issued by the mayor in conjunction with the Office of the Governor of Pennsylvania's proclamation of disaster emergency for the entire Commonwealth and authorizing the mayor to exercise and enforce the emergency powers necessary to preserve the health, welfare, and safety of the citizenry of the city of Scranton as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic emergency certificate attached. Thank you, Mrs. Reed. You've heard reading by title of item 6B. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6B pass reading by title. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Mrs. Reed? Seventh order, 7A for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, resolution number 27, 2020, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a contract with Thomas J. McLean and Associates as City of Scranton Project Consultant, Recreation Needs Assessment and Project Activities for the period December 1, 2019 through November 30, 2024. As Chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question? Uh, just on the question, I'm going to be voting in favor of this legislation, as I mentioned during the caucus. Uh, the city does not currently have a comprehensive assessment of its park system. Uh, this contract with Thomas J. McLean and Associates will provide the city with a roadmap for our park system for the next several years. Having a master plan concept for each of our parks will give the city a better ability to receive grants in the future for all of these areas. Continuing to upgrade and invest in our park system is crucial to the success of the city. Our city parks and recreation department does a really good job in maintaining the parks that we have. Uh, the city needs to continue to invest in this department and make sure that they have the tools and the manpower that they need. Uh, I've had several conversations with uh, our police chief in the last few years about the impact uh, that a well-maintained and active park has on a neighborhood. Um, it is so important to the success of our neighborhoods. And it really comes down to the broken windows theory. When a park is blighted and it's run down, it invites a criminal element. Uh, we need to ensure that that does not happen and that we need to continue to invest uh, in our park system as much as we can. Anyone else on the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. 
Mr. Gaughan. Yes, I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for adoption. Resolution number 28, 2020, accepting a donation of $5,000 from the estate of Rita Buckley Connolly, deceased, to the City of Scranton Fire Department. Thank you, Mrs. Reed. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety? As chairman uh, for the Committee of Public Safety, I recommend final passage for item 7B. Second. Anyone on the question? On the question, I would just like to uh, thank the, Bu the Buckley family for this, this generous donation. Thank you, Mr. McAndrew. Anyone else on the question? Roll call, please, Ms. Carrera. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gawhan? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. 7C, formerly 6C, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, file of the Council Number 5, 2020, ratifying the declaration of emergency issued by the mayor in conjunction with the Office of the Governor of Pennsylvania's Proclamation of Disaster Emergency for the entire Commonwealth and authorizing the mayor to exercise and enforce the emergency powers necessary to preserve the health, welfare, and safety of the citizenry of the city of Scranton as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic emergency certificate attached. As chairperson for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7C. Second. On the question. Roll call, Ms. Carrera, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gawhan? Yes. I uh, hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. Uh, before we adjourn, I, I just want to say uh, once again uh, that I and I know all of my colleagues are thinking about and uh, praying for all of those affected by uh, the coronavirus crisis. Uh, once again, would echo what some of my colleagues said tonight and what we said last week that uh, we would ask that all residents of Scranton take this very seriously. And I think most uh, people are. Um, it is not a hoax, it's not a joke, and the sooner that we all do our part and stay inside as much as we can, the sooner that we can get back to uh, normal here in the city and in the country and around the world. Uh, again, I know that for all of us who may be watching this meeting tonight uh, or watching it on, on YouTube, uh, this is difficult. Being separated from your family, for some of us uh, who have not seen our parents or grandparents, grandparents who haven't seen their grandchildren, um, it's extremely, extremely difficult. Um, but we will uh, get through this together as a city. Um, this council and the administration are doing everything that we can to make sure that uh, everything is in place. I know that uh, so that we are uh, prepared for this. I know our, our state government is as well. Um, so I just want to, again, uh, say that our thoughts are, are with everyone and uh, we continue to, to think about everyone at this time. Uh, if there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great holiday, everybody. Have a good night.